for the last two weeks we've been testing primarily the autonomous navigation. So that's the ability for the rover to autonomously understand where it is in the landscape and navigate around by itself because obviously on planetary bodies you don't have any GPS or anything. The navigation system here is uh, built on technology that was originally developed for the, the ExoMars project. Um, so we took the ExoMars system and we've been uh, designing and adapting for Sample Fetch Rover, um, which unfortunately isn't happening anymore. Um, but uh, in, really what we've produced is a sort of fairly powerful and generic navigation system um, which can be used to, in any unstructured environment. So as we can see here, we've taken it to a, a quarry <laughs> in the UK uh, and we've been driving it around uh, and testing how it performs in real world conditions. So. These tests have been were, were part of the Sample Fetch Rover campaign and had been already funded by ESA and I think they were very keen in, in, in seeing the results because uh, I think everybody acknowledges that the know-how you get from doing this is an investment in, in the future. So Sample Fetch Rover, um, in contrast to ExoMars, when Sample Fetch Rover, it was going to be deposited on the surface of <laughs> Mars and it needed to go very quickly to go pick up the samples and get back to the lander. Okay, so it didn't carry any scientific instrumentation, it was a bit like a courier on Earth. You know, mm -hmm. just go very, very quickly, pick something up, bring it back. They had these wheels, uh, these flexible wheels that kind of conform to the surface rather than climb over it. And that gave, uh, th that was done because it, it was felt it would give it, give it better ability to overcome some of the terrains and some of the obstacles that Sample Fetch Rover would um, come across on the surface of Mars. And they traced their heritage all the way back to the uh, lunar rovers that we used on the Apollo program. This, this rover can drive between two and six times faster than ExoMars because originally it was supposed to pick up the sample tubes in a very short amount of time. I think it is faster than Perseverance and Curiosity as well because uh, it's a, it was a fetch rover so it was supposed to go quickly and pick up these pieces. Um, so again, I think it's about twice as fast as Perseverance. We've been extremely happy <laughs> how it's been performing in this fake Mars. So uh, we've, we've tried to make it as uh, Mars-like as possible for sort of uh, scattering rocks throughout and uh, making sure that uh, the environment is uh, it, it encounters is uh, full of interesting obstacles.